In the previous tutorial, I showed you how to use the Joint Editor tool, a component of the Figure Setup tools for Dev Studio, to set the center and end points for the bones of your figure. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to use the Joint Editor tool to modify the bend type parameters for those bones. I'll start by selecting the bone of the figure I'd like to modify. Come up to the current parameter drop-down and choose one of the bend type parameters which are these that begin with the joint prefix. You can see in the viewport some handles that allow me to change the effect of this bone. See as I drag these handles the coloring on the mesh changes. That coloring is the vertex weighting of the effect of this parameter. To help visualize the effect of the parameter, I go ahead and go to the parameters tab and bend the bone. As you can see here, the area between the two dynamic handles that define the dynamic angles is fully affected by bending the bone. The area between the static handles that define the static angles is not affected at all by manipulating that bone. The area between the static handle and the dynamic handle is a gradient fall off from not affected at all to 100% affected. As I drag this handle, notice the effect it has on the mesh. With this jointing system, the geometry of the bone that's currently selected and the geometry of its parent are the only areas of the mesh that will be affected. Setting the handles to affect an area larger than that Does nothing. I should point out that in order for the content built with these tools to be compatible with Poser, this option, Enable Angles, must be checked. The option below it here, Push Neighboring Angles, when checked, allows me to drag these angles to the adjacent angle, and you can see that it pushes it as I drag. If I turn that option off and drag the angle, I'll see that I'm allowed to pass it. While there are some cases where passing the angles would be beneficial, most of the time you want to keep the angles between their adjacent neighbors. In addition to dragging in the viewport, I can use the sliders to adjust the angles as well. I can click on the edges of the slider to nudge, or I can manually type in a value. The option below the sliders, Enable Bulges, turns bulges on and off for this parameter. The sliders with the positive prefix define the values for the amount of bulge to be applied when the bone is manipulated in a positive direction. The sliders with the negative prefix are used to define the amount of bulge applied when the bone is rotated in a negative direction. Bulges allow you to define a spherical fall off from the center of the joint to push creases out that might be created by the angles. We can further modify the effect of the angles by enabling the sphere matrices. By checking this option, the effect of the matrices are calculated into the final deformation of the mesh. To begin to modify these, I'm going to select this set matrices to default. You notice the viewport got quite busy when I did that. What you see are the spheres 
and the handles for adjusting them. The sliders below can be used to manually edit their values by clicking and dragging, nudging, or manually editing the value. Which sphere these sliders affect depends on the option you have here, which is the active sphere. It can be the static, the dynamic, both of them using static values, or both of them using the dynamic values. If you're building content that should be compatible with Poser, you'll want to have this rotation compatibility option checked. This option limits the degrees of freedom for the spheres so that Poser can properly decompose the matrices. With this option checked, these rings become inactive. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off so I can show you what the rings actually do. I want to simplify the display for a moment so I can show you what's going on. I'll turn off static sphere the bone hierarchy, and mesh boundaries. Now you see on the sphere here, as I mouse over the manipulators, certain things highlight. The cubes are for scaling. Clicking and dragging on one of these will scale from the opposite side. And notice the effect it has on the mesh. The rings allow me to rotate the sphere. You may have noticed that that popped back in place. What I did was I had the left click selected and with left click still down I right clicked and that reverted the value to the value I started with. Also notice we have manipulators for translation. And the center cube is for global scale. Similarly to the dynamic angles, the green sphere defines the area of the mesh to be fully affected by this parameter. This sphere defines the full effect of the zone that it's in. So in this area, it would use the full effect of the gradient falloff. In the dynamic area, it would use the full effect defined here. And I'll turn the static sphere back on so you can see how it relates to that. The static sphere defines the area of falloff from the dynamic sphere. You'll notice that it'll take quite a bit of tweaking these joints and spheres to get the complete effect that you want for the joint. And it'll be different for every bone. 